So uh, guys, welcome to the new vlog um, of today. And uh, so today I want to talk a little bit about what the state of entrepreneurship is and some of the reality that it's happening on the ground. Uh, you know, one, one of the biggest challenge I've seen is that we talk about African entrepreneurship as a whole, but when you get into the nitty gritty, or when you look at, you know, a little bit deeper, you realize that a lot of entrepreneurship, especially on the innovation space, are not run or owned uh, by entrepreneurship. Uh, and I have a saying where, you know, we, we give our young African entrepreneur a stick to go fight in a field full of guns. You know, we're not preparing and giving the proper access uh, to our entrepreneur to win this battle, you know, and that's the that, that's that's one of the biggest problems I've seen. So um, I, I want to give you an example. There's a certain area uh, of innovation, for example, an entrepreneur, an African entrepreneur, most likely cannot win if getting into that space. And that's the home solar system, for example. It's dominated by foreign companies that do business in Africa. Uh, so if you want to start, for example, a, a lighting system. Now, of course, when I talk about not win, that doesn't mean you can't make any money. You'll make a little bit of money, but what about scaling, building a business, developing, improving your technology? That's going to be very difficult. Because what you see is there's a lot of player in this game that able to raise a lot of capital, you know, a lot of money. And, and there's no need to, 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 to name those companies most of you guys know. But if you want to start a, a, a home solar system, or let's say a, a lighting system uh, to power a home for low-income people, you know, how can you compete with a company that raised 20, 30, 40 million dollars, uh, you know, to, to really penetrate that market? So you see that innovation is becoming restricted. And it's, it's, it's really not on the energy sector. It's getting now into the agricultural sector. Uh, it's start getting into some key sectors because at the end of the day, capital is still key. You know, if, 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 if people telling you that you don't need money to build a business, first thing you need to ask them, where they from? Because something wrong with them. Uh, second question you need to ask them, what business are you talking about? If you say, you know, if you want to be a consultant, fine, you don't need a lot of money. You don't need any money. You need your human capital. If it's about, you know, just like a web designer, uh, as long as it's a human capital related. But if it's a product development related, you need capital. You know, the, the, the guys that have enough capital to develop the technology, build their marketing, build their team, scaling and all those things is the one that is winning most of the time unless you come up with something extremely innovative that's gonna, you know, bypass all those things, but even then, they can copy you, you know, and I can give you plenty of example. You know, uh, I, I, I love the idea how Facebook has been copying um, Snapchat on a lot of functionality. So every time Snapchat come up with something interesting that is scaling, boom, Instagram and, and Facebook are copying that and he undermines Snapchat. It's the same thing in everything, man. So if somebody is telling you, um, you don't need money to build an innovative business or a product business, please get rid of those guys because they, they, they're out of their mind. They don't know what they're talking about, you know? So the point of this is how can we still compete in this space? Well, the good news is we know our market best than anybody, you know? We know the ecosystem. We know the communities. We know the culture, how things are going. We, we can develop strategy, business model uh, that is very unique. That's the way you can win when you don't have access to a lot of capital, is finding ways through partnership. You know, I love the SDG 17, uh, for example, that value partnership. And that's the way we, you need to do. So a lot of big companies, um, that bring business from overseas or technology from overseas, they open offices in every country. So they require to raise capital all the time because it's very expensive. You know, the market in Africa is so fragmented that you have to open offices in all those markets. Um, that's their strategy. And when you do so, 
you have to get a lawyer, you have to get an accountant, uh, you have to get staffing, uh, you have to know the laws of, of those books. So you have to spend a lot of money on each, on each country. The strategy I always promote is partnership. License, franchise your technology, um, and that's, that's gonna be a game changer because now you don't need to raise a lot of capital. But at the same time, you're not gonna, you're not gonna collect a lot of the money. You know, you're gonna have to share some of that revenue with your partner. So yes, you'll, you'll, you'll scale up exponentially, but at the same time, your revenue will be less. But you got less stress, you got less expenses. So at the end, you'll be winning. Um, and and I, I, I do want to um, end with this because I, I, I see a lot of uh, I see a lot of value uh, with companies that African companies especially that are developing technology uh, in Africa don't have a lot of resources to push those technology, but at the same time look at partnership with big corporations, you know. Uh, one, one of the things we've been promoting a lot is how can we collaborate or how can we work with large corporations um, to scale up our business. And one of the best examples we've been using is Microsoft. Uh, our business wouldn't be possible, our business would be too expensive without cloud technology. And we're using Azure Class. For those who don't know, Azure is part of is the Microsoft uh, cloud system. And we always trying to showcase how Azure or Microsoft as a whole can help uh, the young African entrepreneurship ecosystem to scale up. Because if we scale up, then we can scale up on our cloud system, we can have more data. Of course, it's, it's an it's a economic cycle. Uh, we spend more on Azure, we use more functionality. So it's a win-win situation and I really really want to engage most of those companies, not just Microsoft, but all those big companies, the Facebook, the Googles, I want to do business in Africa. Uh, how can you empower the entre entrepreneurship ecosystem in Africa? I'm focusing on African entrepreneur. How can you guys help us get to the next level? Because the ecosystem in Africa for entrepreneurship is different than Europe, Asia. And, and America. It's, it's not yet mature. It needs a lot of economic empowerment um, in that space. So one of the areas is investment. All those big guys should have investment branch for African companies. Um, a second thing is, you know, how can you, how can you help them uh, uh, scale up their business? For example, help them find partners in those areas, uh, in those other countries, you know, help them scale. Uh, those are the areas I think will be the future of partnership between big corporations and young innovative entrepreneurs in Africa. But another thing was going to happen in a lot of innovation uh, in Africa is there's going to have to be a lot of consolidation of uh, technology and consolidation of companies. Uh, if you look at the ecosystem right now, man, that's something that blows my mind. I don't get it. FinTech, for example. There's five, six, 10, 20 FinTech per countries now, doing almost the same thing. Yeah, some of them are tweaking around, some of them have a tweak in te technology innovation, but let's be honest, it is the same thing, you know, how to digitally uh, 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 bring FinTech technology into the market. What I don't get is why companies are now merging together or consolidating. You know, you see now telecom companies consolidating because now the market is becoming saturated. You know, and that's what's going to happen in Africa. A lot of the technology will have to consolidate. Some of the young entrepreneurs in fintech or any other technology that has a lot of player in the ecosystem needs to figure out how to way to merge, to either come together or buy out. Uh, you know, or you're not going to win. Again, you have some fintech company right now raising 40, 50 million dollars. And those are the guys gonna win if you don't be careful. So if I were you and I'm a young fintech company, I would look at the whole ecosystem and find some of the players that are doing the similar work and find a way to merge so it can be bigger, number one. Number two, it'll be much better for you to raise capital. So let's say you merge with three guys uh, from three different countries. Now you're automatically in three countries instead of one. You know, now it's not an easy thing to do. You know, it's very difficult. 
Another key thing I, I, I think that will help uh, the ecosystem uh, of funding for African entrepreneur is the stock uh, uh, market we're trying to we're trying to develop across Africa. Uh, the 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 what, what, they call it the stock market or the uh, what was that? Uh, I mean they have a few. They have one in Kenya. They have one here in Rwanda. They need to develop products for startups where we can go public or get public capital. Of course that. We need to develop a structure. We need to develop uh, 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 some rules and regulation around it. But that is needed. You know, again, the traditional stock market is not a good fit for startups. Uh, if you look at the the Nasdaq, for example, in the states, that's usually the the top 500 companies in the world that uh, apply to that. But for Africa, we need a way to raise capital for startups uh, uh, for young companies. So imagine, I'll give you a perfect example. Imagine you're a startup, you have to be at least in business for uh, two years. You have to already have generating revenue. You have to have a customer base. You have to have a proof of concept. And you allow this young entrepreneur to get capital from the public, uh, just like Bonds does, you know? And now people can invest a thousand uh, uh, franc or a dollar for those, uh, the equivalent of around a dollar uh, to two hundred dollars, you know. Now you have access to the public to raise capital. That could be a game changer for an, for an ecosystem that is lacking uh, investment funding and, and 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 tools for people to raise capital. That could be a game changer. So we need to stop copying what the West and, and the East uh, Asia are doing and really create an ecosystem from the ground up that is really catered to the young African entrepreneur, period.